There is a heat wave of historic proportions occurring in the Arctic right now. Almost 3 million hectares of forest is burning. Warning, contents are hot. So Siberia's on fire, but can someone tell me how the hell one of the coldest places on the planet, yes, this place where Keanu was bear hunting on the tundra, reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit before parts of Texas and Tunisia. Let's toss it over to Alex in Russia for a temperature check. The common understanding between climatologists is that warming above Northern Circle is much faster than in Southern latitudes. And this summer proves this evident tendency. In July, very powerful heat spread throughout the Arctic region. In Verkhoyansk, northeastern Yakutia, as absolute maximum temperature for the entire history of meteorological observations was recorded. Extreme heat isn't that weird for Siberia. The fact that these central parts of Siberia aren't surrounded by the ocean to regulate its temperature means that it gets really cold in the winter and really hot in the summer. But there's one thing that's making it so damn hot. Jet stream was flowing directly from the hot Central Asia to Siberia. That's why we had nearly two months of unbelievably hot weather close to Arctic Ocean. So anytime there's a heat wave, you can pretty much blame it on weird things happening in the jet stream? Let's check it out in the sky. Jet streams are like the master control panel of our weather and fluctuations in its speed and flow determine when it gets hot, when it gets cold, rainy. They exist as four high altitude rivers of wind that circle the globe from the west to the east. And they form where the cool polar air mass meets the warm tropical air mass. The bigger the temperature difference between these two, the stronger the jet stream. But as the Arctic warms, that temperature difference shrinks and the jet stream slows down and becomes wavier. This wavier jet stream can get stuck sucking in and trapping hot air over a region. What happened in Siberia is that we had a big loop northward and it stayed there for quite a while. And people may think, well, the Arctic's a long way away, doesn't really affect us. This tendency for the jet stream to become weaker, to break down and allow these dips down to the south or to the north is causing more extreme weather events in the mid latitudes, like in Europe, like in Siberia and like in North America. And this is happening in other parts of the world, too. That's why we saw such devastating wildfires in Australia earlier this year. But what really surprises climatologists is just how long this heat wave is lingering. It was quite a bit warmer than normal from December through June. Now we're getting heat waves on top of the longer term warming trend. So you are more prone to having the extremes be even more extreme. And the longer these heat waves hang around, the more damage they cause. The area occupied by ice in July reached an absolute minimum in the history of meteorological observations in the Arctic. The wildfires, they're coming from the fact that the snow melted early, the soil dries out, the vegetation dries out early, and you've got the warm temperatures. But when you get temperatures this warm and the conditions are this dry, it's those fires become, they burn hotter, they spread wider, and they're more destructive. Let's toss it over to the vice correspondent on the front lines of the fires. 2020 has been the hottest year on record in Russia, and wildfires are raging in Siberia and even above the Arctic Circle. In two months, wildfires in the Arctic have released more CO2 than the Scandinavian countries do in a year. The shrubs, grasses, and mosses of the tundra started to burn. That's an entirely new source of planet warming carbon, as well as methane from thawing permafrost. So with melting permafrost, we've got dangerous amounts of methane, carbon, and potentially trapped bacteria being released, buildings collapsing, a fuel tank spilling 21,000 tons of diesel into a river in May, and a totally altered ecosystem. This is a breaking news special report interruption, California edition. Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Sandia Patel with ABC7 News in San Francisco. I have never ever seen the heat waves as bad as they've been. Typically here in the Bay Area, we see those heat waves lasting about three days. This time around, we saw that heat wave lasting for seven days. We have so many fires burning that even a switch in the wind direction isn't getting rid of what we've been experiencing here, which is awful air quality at times. It's just hard to see, it's hard to breathe. Global climate change is real. I can tell you that in the last 
25 years that I've been forecasting the weather, I've never seen heat waves as intense as we've experienced in the last couple of years. I think something needs to be done because obviously it's not getting any better for any of us. This has been a breaking news special report interruption. So far, California's fires have scorched a record 3.2 million acres, all thanks to one of those lingering heat waves, just like we've seen in Siberia. The Arctic is telling us what's going to happen to the rest of the globe in future decades. In the Arctic, you know, a couple degrees to go from 31 Fahrenheit to 33 Fahrenheit, that's the difference between ice skating and swimming. It's often hard to care about something so far away and so seemingly invisible. But just remember, when the Arctic heats up, we all heat up. Globally, you know, it's global warming, so we're warming the entire globe, so it's effectively going to happen everywhere. And so with that, extreme heat remains a weather event we can confidently link to climate change.